This is the plaintiff, Andrew Bateman. He says he has a little handyman business going and was hired by the defendant to do some things around her house, and she's stiffing him. That's right, he works hard for his money and isn't about to let the defendant get away without paying him the $1,026.16 he's owed. So he's suing. This is the defendant, Natalie Cross. She says the plaintiff sent some guy to her house who hadn't bathed in a while. He had a substance abuse problem and owe him no way. She's accused of raising a real stink. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that he got stiffed by the defendant after doing some handiwork, but the defendant is saying baloney. Uh, the plaintiff sent one of his guys to do the job, and the guy smelled to the holy you-know-what. It's the case of your guy is stinky, and your business is rinky-dinky. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, handy Andy, love it. Mr. Bateman, you have a, a handyman business called Handy Andy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what did you hire him to do, Ms. Cross? Well, um, Your Honor, initially I hired him to uh, come out and quote, putting together a batting cage. My mother w thought she was gonna order a trampoline, but this was right before COVID. So he quoted out the amount of what the trampoline would be the batting cage. And then I asked him how much other items would be. And the batting cage came. They put that together. Trampoline never came. Yeah, hold on one second. The estimate that you gave her for the work that you would do, uh, so it included a batting cage. What's the next word? I can't read that. The next one was hanging pictures. The item number three was change out a light fixture. How many pictures needed to be hung? Well, it's marked there four pictures were hung, were supposed to be hung, but she okay. added more. How many more did she end up adding? Uh, I think it was 11 pictures more. Okay, number four and is assembling the trampoline. Yes, ma'am. Five is repairing a glass door. Yes, on a uh, an antique little curio cabinet. Number six was changing a light in uh, studio lighting all right, installing a ceiling fan, installing drapes, and uh, what's the last one? Post, poster bed frame. Okay, yeah, what ends up happening? You end up sending somebody to work there and that person works how many days? Yes, ma'am, it was about four days total, but originally um, she wasn't showing up and we don't charge any money when we give a written estimate up first, up front. And she wanted to give me a check right away for the total, and I and I gave her the estimate. Told her the range would be between fourteen thirty and no more than nineteen fifty. And when she agreed, she signed the estimate, which would we would start the work. Um, she said, "Okay, she the client the wanted to pay you, and you wouldn't let the client pay you." Yes, ma'am. I don't accept any money in my business. That's how we make our customers happy. We do the work when our customers are happy and we're finished with the work, that's when we get paid. That's why I have such great reviews with my business. Okay, well, if it works for you, I mean, because uh, uh, I'd be afraid that you end up in the position that you're in right now, which is you did a bunch of work, and then now you've gotten zero for the work you did, right? That yes, would be my yes. fear. Okay, so yes, tell me what work your guy did do. He, as you can see on the, the estimate there where the checks are, those are the items that have been completed. All right, so you did the batting cage, you hung up extra pictures, uh, including the pictures that have been talked about, you changed uh, the floodlights. The trampoline didn't get done. And why didn't the trampoline get done? The trampoline never showed up. Right, okay, and then the repairing of the glass door, that didn't get done, right? The yes, antique glass door. Correct. Because you thought you were still working there, and, and then uh, what about ceiling fan did that get put in she never got the ceiling fan fixture she was supposed to go out and okay. go shopping to get these items of a curtain rod and she and the she drapes she it. didn't do that either all right and so yes, what was the extra work you guys did you hung up extra um 
paintings and what else? There was a stove light that got fixed and what else? There was a stove light that she wanted repaired as well. And she told Larry to do the items uh, of the extra work without my, you know, my knowledge. Tell me the extra that work. This happened. One more track light. 11 more pictures were hung. She changed, he changed two light bulbs in the hallway. Uh, a stove light was replaced and four lights in the front porch area, which was uh, spotlights, blood lamps. What do you mean? Change bulbs or did something more profound? I don't, I don't remember it, uh, what he did exactly. Is he present? Yes, he is. Can I speak yes. to him a second? Yes. Can you raise your right hand, please? Yes, ma'am. Do you, you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I hope you got it. Yes, sir. Your Honor. Okay. I, what I want to focus on right now is the extra work you did, because I understand that you folks have been paid zero, and she feels you should be paid a lot less than what you charge. I'll give you the floor in a moment. But I need to understand what the extra work was. The stove light, and your boss just said one more track light. What does that mean? The phrase one more track light. What did you actually do? I changed the, um, the bulbs out of the, um, the, the track lights. Okay. And then 11 more pictures were hung, right? Right. And then two bulbs in the hall were changed. And then he said four lights, four other floodlights. What did that mean exactly? Uh, on, the, on the front porch, there, there was two fixtures and the, all the bulbs had to be changed out on that. Okay, so it was just bulb changing. There was no electrical work. Okay. All right, can you switch back and put your boss back on there? And then, Ms. Cross, what seems to be the problem? Because from what I understand, you've paid zero for the work that was done in your house, and I'd like to understand why. Yes, Your Honor, and that is certainly not how I would ever do business. But if you'll give me a moment Well, it's exactly how you did business, though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> correct. However... What he is saying is, is not the truth. When he quoted doing the job, he said he would send a crew to put the batting cage together. So that would not be, I would never have agreed to an hourly wage. I felt very uncomfortable with the situation. You could ask Larry, I wanted to pay for the batting cage that day. They were very insistent on keep coming back, coming back. I pull into my drive. The stuff wasn't coming in. COVID started happening. And I just said, let me go ahead and pay. Let me go ahead and pay. Let's be done with it. Well, the next thing I know, we're in the hospitality industry. I had to leave, go out of state with my children for a month and a half to save our family business. When I came back, I had to have a life-saving surgery. And again, I had told him when I spoke with him when I was in Georgia, please let me go ahead and pay. No, let's wait and see if the trampoline comes in. And I'm like, gosh, you know, let's just, I don't want, you know, I'm thinking, I don't want you back at my home. Why didn't you want him back at your house? What was the problem? I, I just did not feel comfortable with the situation or with the work. Why? No, you have to tell me the details. Tell me, tell me the details. Why didn't you feel comfortable? I don't want to ever speak disparagingly about someone, but I just did not feel safe in my home with the person that he had sent. And I, and I did Why? not like the way that he, um, it did not seem like that person had bathed in quite some time. Um, I wasn't quite sure what was going on um, and just the insistency of him. And so fast forward as I'm getting over a life, literally I almost died. My daughter was having a meltdown. All of a sudden, handy Andy, shows up on my doorstep out of the blue. Okay. How old's uh, your daughter? My daughter at the time was only 10 years old. Okay. So go ahead. What happens? He shows up at your door. You know, I could barely walk. My daughter is bawling, crying because she's having just a meltdown over COVID. I said, what are you doing on my doorstep? This is not, he said, I'm here to get my money. So I got a check and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a check. I'll pay you $743. That is all that I think that you were owed for the amount of work that you did. And then he started being rude. He said, no, you're going to pay me for everything. Then my daughter is, at this point, hysterical. And if you see a 10-year-old child going crazy, you should leave the property. And you see a woman who, you know, I had a check in hand. I said, if you don't leave my property, I'm going to have to call the police. I said, I said, just take me to court. I said, get off my property. 
He stayed in my driveway for an additional hour. The police couldn't come because there were protests downtown. At that point, I wanted to come to court. More than happy to pay what's owed, but you cannot go onto someone's property and scare their child like that. And multiple times I tried to pay. Mr. Bateman, tell me your response to what she's saying. After numerous attempts to contact her via text and phone calls with no response, uh, I stopped by her house uh, while we were in the neighborhood working at a, at a house down the street. I went and knocked on her door and she answered the door one time when I came in and she was uh, inebriated and they were doing like homework on the front uh, front table. And she said that she was taking medication, but she smelled like a brewery. And she said, why are you at my front door? I said, uh, Miss, Mrs. Cross, I said, I've been trying to get a hold of you and texting you. Well, let's you look at the Larry text. I see that on March 13th, he said you, you explained to him that you were dealing with a, a resort in Georgia and you know, trying to save the family business. All right. So now it's March 13th and he says, stay safe and protected. Then on April 10th, which is almost a month later, he says, wanted to know what was going on. Hope you're OK. Haven't heard anything from you. We need to know how to proceed. Can you call me? You do not call him. Then a month later, on May 5th, hello, Natalie, this is Handy Andy trying to get in touch with you. Please call me. You do not call him. On May 6th, hello, Natalie, this is Handy Andy trying to get in touch with you. I've left messages. I've tried calling you numerous times. You do not call him. When is it that you show up at her doorstep, Andy? Um, I believe it was almost July. Does that sound correct? Ms. Cross, when did no. he show up on your doorstep? It was the day of the police of May Again. I don't remember. No, again, no. Specific. Listen to my question. I'm just asking you. Do you remember when he showed up on your doorstep? Yes or no? Okay, that's fine. I guess. So I why were you remember. ghosting him? Because I'm looking at you ghosting him from March all the way to maybe June or July. We're not sure. So, so I'm kind of <clears throat> interested in hearing how that's okay, because that's why the guy's at your doorstep because he doesn't have another way of contacting you and getting paid. Whether it's 700 or 1,000, he has no other way because you are not returning any of the texts. You owe him money, he's trying to reach out, he's trying to understand what's going on, and you completely ghost him. Why is that okay? My boyfriend called him in May when I was about to have emergency life-saving surgery, in which don't Handy open. Andy, please don't interrupt, in which Handy Andy tells my boyfriend, oh, make sure that she doesn't have to get the mesh because I had to get the mesh when I had a hernia repair. It's awful. So that is not Does that conversation I, sound familiar, Mr. Bateman? I, I, I remember about the mesh, but I don't remember talking to the boyfriend. I, I thought she had a husband. I don't well, know whatever. about a boyfriend. Whether it's a husband or a boyfriend. Yes. So did yeah, somebody I, I reach know. out to you? Um, did you have a hernia and use a mesh? And yes, she knows that, so saying. clearly somebody talked to you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. So listen, what we have to determine now, because you folks have put me in this position, is the value of the work that was done, because uh, he didn't get to finish, but it's not his fault. The trampoline didn't come in. You never got what you wanted at Home Depot for the drape. My fault. Those things are not his. You signed a contract to do that work. I don't interpret it the same way you do. However, I am cognizant that he didn't have to do that work. So what I do now is not... I'm not going to sit here and assign an hourly wage. I'm going to decide what that work is worth. What I'd like to know, because you, you were vehemently shaking your head when he said that uh, four days, that his guy was there four days. What was your response to that? How many days was the guy there? If I remember correctly, he couldn't have been here over two days or two and a half days. But I can assure you, I had a check in my hand. I don't mind paying the man but it was the principal. You can send a certified letter in a bill. You don't show I up did. at someone's doorstep. He did send a certified letter. Uh -huh. He did. That's a great idea. He did do that. All right. Uh, what You had said something about a batting cage would be $400. Where did you get that idea? The Was that like in, in a quote somewhere? Where did you, Ms. Cross? Uh, it was on the original handwritten quote. I don't really see that. 
uh, can you show me what you're referring to? Because I don't see it on that original quote. Again, it's handwritten. Where, where, I, I it's handwritten never, where, though? I don't see it. I don't, I would never I don't, lie. I would never what? I said, I wouldn't lie about something like that. Oh, my dear. Every day, two people in front of me say different things. I got to get to the bottom of which one's correct. So do you have anything in writing from him saying that the batting cage would only be $400 to assemble? Because you keep saying that, but I'm looking for it and I can't find it. I, I, no, ma'am, I don't. I, I, I best have thrown it away. Did you ever tell her, Mr. Uh, Bateman, that the batting cage would be $400 to assemble? No. OK. All right. That's all I wanted to know. All right. And did you, according to your answer to the complaint, you hired an off-duty officer to protect you and your house because you were afraid of the plaintiff? Can you go into that? Absolutely, I did. Yes, that evening I did because I was so terrified. When you see a 10-year-old child screaming and crying and begging for this man to leave, and she's already in distress about COVID, any normal person would say, sweetheart, I'm sorry, um, you know, I'll leave, I'll take this matter up in other ways. You don't sit there and just stand at a door and continue to scare a child. That's, that is the whole principle for me right at this point. It's just not okay. okay. So how much of the off-duty cop cost you? Um, I believe it was around maybe $200, $250. Two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. You were willing to pay him seven seventy. What he was asking for was a thousand. Wouldn't it have been better to just pay the guy the thousand? All right, folks. Based on what work was done, what work wasn't done, what work was added, I am going to do what we call a little rough justice, and I am going to order you, Ms. Cross to pay the plaintiff $900. That is my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. So the judge decides Handy Andy is going to get some money after all, $900, not the 1026 he sued for. Uh, Ms. Cross, the, the defendant, let me ask you a question. At one point, you said instead of $1,026, you were going to give him $743. I just asked, how'd you come up with that figure, $743? Well, I just don't think two days of work would warrant, if you're just hanging pictures and changing light bulbs and putting together a batting cage, is, you know, over $1,000. Well, it was a crazy figure to come up with. Look, you got to give him 900 How about that? Are you okay with that now? Do you feel like they deserve that or not? You still more, upset. More, no, more than okay. Just, I certainly hope that this man never tries to scare another child. That was the whole point. And it was COVID. Horrible, horrible times. So, no, you know, no one was trying to get out of anything, nor could I help having to have a life-saving surgery in May during COVID. It sounded like you were trying to get out of paying him because you didn't respond for a long, long time. It's not surprising you lost the case. Mr. Bateman, how do you feel about it now? You're going to get some money, 900 bucks. Is that okay with you? Sure. The, the judge did, uh, did good. She, she heard the case. And does that happen very you know, often that's what she does. where you send out one of your guys and somebody objects to them for some reason, like they didn't think the guy. Had no, paid we're very or, easy to work you know, with. To, that's that's yeah. why we keep good communication with uh, with our customers. OK, well, you have won the case. Congratulations and uh, good luck to you. OK, and that'll wrap it up for this dispute. Let's see what Harvey has to say. Harvey. OK, Doug, um, I have to say that if you believe somebody is really smelly and that's why you're not paying them, you're pretty much out of luck. Good hygiene, unless it's in the contract, isn't something that allows you to stiff someone. Marilyn, do you follow your own advice? Do you get three estimates? Do you always get a receipt? <laughs> All right, so I, I, maybe not three, but I, I don't think I'd get 
less than two on a new guy, right? right? Like well, on a new person, on a new service. What if, if it's somebody a guy I, you know? Yeah, if, you, if it's somebody you trust, and usually you what them. I find is that if there's somebody you trust and you use them, you use them and then after like a year or two, all of a sudden you're paying exorbitant prices again and then you go shopping yeah, again, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then as soon as you go someplace else, then you're like, oh, why did I, 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 I Yeah, I know, so you never burn story. a bridge, but. Right, you don't miss your water till your well runs dry. And, yeah, oh but it is God. true. I mean, we try to get multiple estimates yeah. because sometimes they're really wildly different and you don't know if you don't know what you don't know you know right. you don't know if the work is really right. worth that or not and so that's yeah. a good way to figure out if you are right. paying a, you know an appropriate fee okay well that is going to do it for today everybody and we will see you next time <laughs>